G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpig. As you saw last week, we put a couple of holes in the side of the boat. We squirted some sparkles through the steel. It was quite good, really. Managed to get the plasma cutter actually working. I sandblasted my arm, ready for painting. Jess patched it back up. She thought primer was a stupid idea. We got some welding done. Look at that. Oh! Jess pointed to the boat. I stood there looking. Bit more sparkles. Dong! Where's the bog? We'll just, <laughs> we'll smear it. When we took the steel out that had the corrosion on the side of the hull, two of the ribs were completely knackered. One of them was in the way, so we cut all three of them out. Today's job, we're gonna rebuild three, put them back in place and get rid of any structural defects on that part of the hull. So, I think the plasma's dead, finally. Um, so now that that's not working, the air hose is free again, so Trev's gonna get back into the sandblasting. He's just about got it done, but it does leave us with the dilemma of, do we get another plasma? I think we need one on the boat. It's just, it's one of those things, eh? They're bloody expensive. Anyway, press on, we'll get the sandblasting done. Gonna blow a bit of air through it. Oh, boy. That's coming out good. Sand test. Oh, there we go. The view you're looking at now, this is all the hydraulic system that we built for Brewpeg. So four lines at the top, these are our steering lines. So they do our um, Orbitrol um, helm pump, which is basically our steering wheel, helps us control the rudder. And then these two pipes going forward here, these are what control our anchor winch. So a feed and a return for the anchor winch. And then all of those head back uh, towards the engine room where there's a, a reservoir in the back that dumps into that reservoir on the return. Cools down, just basically uses um, volume to cool. There's about 60 litres of, of oil that just recirculates through the whole system. Um, and then, yeah, back up and through the, the system. So it's a closed loop and it's just constantly circling through that loop. Um, and oil and oil pressure are just delivered to whatever machine is using it at that time. What's it doing? Oh, the sand just keeps stopping. Ah. You can see the texture of it? Yeah. It's Weird. It's just impervious. Um, oh, should we just dump all the sand out of it and refresh it just in case it's a bit of grit in there? Guys, a lot of uh, moisture in there. Yeah, a lot of moisture in there. Is that, where's that from? Sand or line? That's from the line. Bloody hell. I think that's your problem. I think it is myself. And I think what's happened is what was on top of the last load yeah. has gone down. Right, gone right down. Okay, well, uh, until we fix that, I don't think we're gonna solve this really, are we? Well, you're probably not gonna uh, fix that unless you put a water separator in. Yeah, I do have an idea for a water separator. I've got this old compressor. That's, the motor's dead, but the tank's still good. Oh yeah. If we plug our line into that, yeah. and then the light, that into the thing, that'll accumulate the water. It will. If we put it right towards the end of the system, the, the tank and all the fittings and everything are fine. Just do it with one arm. Yeah. Four wheel drive compressor. We're getting way too much water coming through our line because we decided to build a boat in the tropics. So it compresses the air up, gets all that moisture, fires it down this hose into our dry sand, which is clogging up the sandblaster. Hence, we can't really sandblast easily in the middle of the day. So we're going to make a water trap out of this old dead compressor. They're not big enough, but they might get us out of trouble. And tip this up. Yeah, let's just get rid of this. We need more than just pull the trigger. Here's 
the rope starter. <laughs> What's that for? Oh, shit. That's for starting the motor. Yeah. <laughs> Not seen the sandblaster run this good, so pretty cool. I'll tell you what it does. So I think that dry sand really makes a big difference. Like the sand itself is dry, but I think our air compressor was just dousing it in water, slowing its velocity, whatever. But um, that's bloody awesome. So we pull started our uh, little Stanley pressure washer, and the bloody cord came out. It's a day of um, amazing reliability from our machinery. So yeah, we'll fix that after lunch. Where's your grinder? Do you want the little baby grinder? <laughs> There's another one of them around, I can't. Uh, yeah, there is. It's not around in the workshop. Might be in the engine room. All oh, right. Although it seems like a pain having to fix the sandblaster, it means we can sandblast that paint outside and not have to deal with it inside. Uh, next, the guys have to take all the dross on the side off uh, using grinders, chisels, whatever they can. We really need to do a 45 for the route run and two capping runs. Once we've done that, we can start rebuilding the ribs. There's three to go in, we'll clean them up and then we'll get the plate on. Sounds easy. <laughs> yeah, we're in there. Yep. I thought we had to shift the boat then. Eh? I thought we might have had yeah. to shift the boat. Cool, that's good. Looks like we know what we're doing now that we've got this set up. It's like, it's like people to will whom? think, yeah, people, whom <laughs> people will think, oh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they will make that assumption. We, we can tell by all the uh, handrails that are on the side of the scaffold yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah. I might pull a pin on it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to pull a pin on it today as well. Get into it tomorrow. I think my bandages are all starting to pull off my arm, so yeah. I'm going to sort them out. Lovely. It's going to rain though, it's going to throw a span in the works, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming from the side too. Yeah. I wonder if I should just take that side up, just get some plastic in it. Cool. Yeah. Now the other thing is, whilst the sandblast is working like it is and that, we do you want to turn the sheet over and do the outside? Um, we don't have to. It's not the end of the world because we're going to be doing a lot of sandblasting on the outside anyway, so it'll just be a rusty panel after Gee, sandblasting. I'll tell you what, what we did to the sandblast has just changed my mind about the is sandblast. It? I, oh, yeah? I dreaded that thing because <laughs> I thought it's just... So just, slow? Well, it's... I just kept thinking there's something about that just not right. Yeah, yeah. Dry the air out and it's awesome. Well, not only that, put the air right at the, the air tank at the machine. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. It, it's a lot I more suppose pressure because I bit With this two morning, tanks, it's got more capacity. Well, not only that, this morning I was, had to turn it off yeah. and it would work all quiet when I, I waited for a while and then turn it on yeah. and it would work yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then it just dwindled Die away. Off. Yeah. And whatever's on that sheet, it just was not yeah. impacting it at all. So having having the extra capacity right there, so when you when you throw the ball valve down, it just basically transfers just, it straight across. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not losing a lot of friction. Because I suppose it doesn't have to go all the way through a hundred yeah. feet of line. Yeah. Yeah, right. Huh? Never thought of that. Yeah, it's just it's just coming straight out of it. It's yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, nice. Yeah. If I had some grey and some dark grey paint. Just for shits and giggles. <laughs> I, I would spray it just for a laugh. It's all done. It's all done. Told you it did. Yeah. All That's right. awesome work for the day. Thank you. Well, sorry I didn't do much, but. No, you're bloody awesome. I can't believe how fast you got that sandblasting done. So there's our sandblasting set up now. As Trev said, it's working like a charm. And then we've got our blasted steel ready to go. So. As always, we want a little bit of surface rust so that we can get our um, phosphoric acid to bond to it. So he's done both sides of the ribs. But yeah, all good. We'll get those in tomorrow. 
You can really see your uh, hydraulics pipes there. They look gorgeous, eh? They look amazing from the bottom when you look up. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, way better. Like when you're down on the ground? Yeah, 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 way better. Jeez, you've cut a, like a massive piece of boat there. I've only cut out one side of the room. <laughs> yeah, I think some perspex. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I think that's a solution. You wanted ventilation, right? I did. How much? <laughs> So what are you doing now? So I've got to go through and trim and clean the top. I've done the I've done the bottom and the two sides. Yeah. See the bottoms are tidy enough to now clean up and weld. Yeah. Oh, and I've just got to make sure these ribs are fine. I think they're done. But up on the top there, you can see those ribs are a bit manky. Mm. Got to clean those up and get them ready to weld too. Oh, wow, that's amazing. What a huge job. Yeah. So I think I've got enough um, steel in the scrap pile to replace rib number three. Whoa, cool. Gee, that makes it easy. Need to have a measure up if that's the case. Um, Should we go out and do that? Show me what you want me to do with the blasting. And yeah, I'll get you to give it a clean up, and then we can start putting them in. I'm, I'm blasting the third rib. Yeah, you're blasting All the right. third rib, and by the hopefully by the time you've done that, I'll have these cleaned up, ready to go. You need to put that tarp up, eh? Yep. How's the arm feeling? Uh, yeah, it still feels like C3PO, but it's okay. Right, we've got to get some serious work done. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, C3PO <laughs> hugging a zombie. Let's go actually do the work on the boat now. <laughs> now that we had the warm up round. Um, I need to get that tarp up on the side. Yep. Is it on the ground? Yep. Do you want to throw it up to me or? Yep. Got it. Okay. Gloves, earplugs, masks, eyes. Good to go. You come around, what I want to do, I'm adjusting the height of this cut all the way along here because I want to take out this old sink drain. If I can get it in one piece of plate, that's going to make not only the job look tidier, but it's going to be much easier to do it like that. It does seem like we spend an inordinate amount of time getting edges right when we do these plates, but if you don't do it right now, your life becomes so much harder later on when you go to line everything up by using the five inch radius everywhere, or sorry, five inch diameter, so I'll say two and a half inch radius. It just makes it really simple. Also, we absolutely killed our plasma cutter. So we ordered a new one this morning. Um, I wanted to get a uni mig like a decent one that's the same brand as our welder, um, commercial sort of quality machine, etc. the one that we were looking at, but there's no way that we could afford it. So we've bought another of the same machine that we had. The one we had before was um, a three-in-one, so I did TIG, stick welding, and uh, plasma. Um, the one that we've just replaced it with is just a plasma only, so I'm hoping less stuff inside, less to go wrong, higher duty cycle, all that sort of stuff. But it has a pilot arc, which I'm really excited about. I've used pilot art machines before and they're amazing compared to scratch start. So, yep, we got one of them on order. It was a cheapie, I think we paid 310 bucks for it. So, it's probably not gonna last a huge amount of time. ventilation hole in the lower cabin now complete um, so what we've done gone through and radius the corners you can sort of see right up here in this corner here nice smooth gentle radius all the way through there's not a lot of room but there's enough room to get a good weld along that top edge there just below the sponson um, and the reason why I've lifted it so close to that sponson is that way I can get rid of um, one patch that was original to the boat um, that they'd done a bit of a botched up repair and the drain that was the original sink drain used to be somewhere about this location here and that was the cause of all of this corrosion so we get rid of the drain we get rid of the corrosion shouldn't have any dramas here the ribs we've got to do a wee bit of work on these so we've, we've ground these back these are weldable now um, however I think we'll replace these gussets they're not big enough like they've too much is gone um, I want six mil gussets and these are probably below three so we'll get rid of that lot and probably just take the this whole rib out 
start a new rib right from the top here and then put a new gusset in at the same time. Um, and one of the other things we can do is we can modify the shape up the top. So we have to be able to get to this area here to weld it. So we'll, we'll bring the rib down, it'll start a wee bit lower, connect to the roof, start a wee bit lower, give us full access to this area here to be able to weld it when we weld the patch in. And then exactly the same down the bottom here, you can sort of see the original rib, they had that gap so that they get a good solid weld all the way around. We'll basically copy that. There's another one there you can sort of see. Um, yeah, that half round that they put into them. I'll show it to you on that side. There you go. You can see this half round that they've cut into the original. So we'll basically duplicate that on all of the areas where we have to get in there and weld. Still got to clean up some of this paint. You can sort of see there's, you know, bits of paint that it's going to be too close to where we need to weld. But overall, it's come up pretty good. I'm happy with that little plasma cutter, even though it's died. I was really stoked that it was able to do clean cuts the way that it has. We've had to do very, very little clean up really, um, considering 98% of this was cut with a plasma cutter. So I have to cut these things out and I managed to just randomly get the old plasma cutter started again. Um, it's definitely on its last leg, so I'm glad that I've ordered a new one to replace it. But um, yeah, it managed to fire up and we were able to use it in one last final gasp. Ginger hair and the way you like to dress. Oh, I mean, I was pretty accurate actually. Decent doodakies, got those on. So with that cut out, it means that I can get into that edge all the way along for the weld on the plate. And you get a really good join right the way around. Here you can see Damon's putting an extra weld in uh, with the, between the rib and the roof. So I've just been negotiating how to do this panel because I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's actually quite a bit of a slope on the side of the hole where we are and we're up above the ground, so it's a wee bit different to the front um, hatches that we did. Um, it's a little bit more dangerous, so we're, we've decided that we do have to, we're going to use the chain block um, to do the main lifting, and you can see Damien's welded the little lifting point there. And we're going to weld a couple of other little lifting points on either side of the, the panel, and then we're going to put one, a rope through here, and we're going to draw a hole and put a rope through the other one. This one here is a wee bit weak, so we're going to go to the next rope. And we'll use those as safety lines. So if anything in the middle gives on the chain block, we've got the safety lines. But also, like this is where the, the chain block is going to go something like this. We'll weld that. So it's going to hook on there. The chain block will come here and we'll, we've got a bit of a slope. So as the panel comes up, we can lift it into position. And the last little bit that's going to kind of probably sit out a little bit, we'll use the safety lines just to wedge it in, just to pull it in. Um, and then we're going to draw the line of the, the design that we need. And, and then we'll drop it down and we'll use the chain block and the safety ropes to lay it flat and then we're going to cut it out. So 
hate it when you put your hand in a glove and there's something in there and you don't know what it is. <laughs> so, it's just getting old. That's what it, it felt like. You know, we were in Australia, it could be anything. <laughs> is it sticky? No. The first test is, is it sticky? Is it moving? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so I'm just going to do these uh, gates. These are the gates for the bag. We, we've chosen to just use the metal off the transom. Um, it's, it's bent and it's bashed around because it's an old trawler boat. We're just going to cut this. We were thinking we'd leave it at this uh, sort of quite fitted, but we talked about it this morning. We're just going to cut a bit off so it just means that it doesn't get sort of um, stuck. You know, there's no chance of getting stuck and it means there's a bit more flow of water um, through the back of the boat. Um, so I'm just going to do that because I really want to get this finished and back up. So I'll just cut that now. Now that you're in your Professor Proton suit. Just getting a little bit too bitey. Because this is stainless, it's had a lot of shit over it in the last year. Um, I'm just going to flap it, the, the rust off and tidy those up. And then I'm going to just sand back and I'll, um, I'll rust kill um, before we paint. Text message from Dangar Stew. Now, I know you probably hate this question as much as we all do, but what is your best estimate for launch date at this stage? I need to organise a few things. Right, that worked. Slightly better than I anticipated. My guesstimate for the middle of the plate was um, slightly off. Nah, I'll just manhandle it. Righto, welded in. Fill the rest up with bog. Can you weld that? Right. Time to draw some lines. It's not much curve in the hole, it's kind of nice. Certainly makes this job easier. Um, maybe we just crank it in and draw lines on it. Right, we need to go down over there, we need to go up over there. Prepare for noise. We're about eight mil away at the top and slightly over at this end, so just have to keep 
going in here. doing one bit at a time the top's not perfectly straight it's got a slight bow so i need to trim like five mil off the top and then pop it up again and i can get it in real tight and then i can mark a nice clean line because i'm a couple of inches out here and i can't get in because of the middle so i'll just slow down get the middle done it'll be sweet sounds awesome get the plate pulled in tight where it's going to be sitting and then I'm going to draw a line around it um, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut right up to that line or if I go a little bit gingerly and just sort of shave bits of it off it's probably going to take me a lot longer if I do it that way ideally you'd put exactly where you need to have it cut exactly where you need to cut and then it should fit but um, yeah I always get a bit nervous when I'm putting new plates in and I always just go a bit slower and steadier so I think we'll just mark this out, drop it down and start trimming. So yeah, we had some plasma drama, but um, it's not really a big deal. We'll get it solved. We'll figure out a way like we always do. Um, we did look at getting a cheap plasma. We, we ordered one off eBay, it arrived, and it was immediately a disappointment. Um, so we're just gonna get a warranty claim on that and then we will um, resolve that and probably get a better plasma. Just We have to just decide how we're gonna do that yet. But I do wanna say thanks. We've had a couple of um, new patrons come on board lately and i really appreciate it you know it's a it's a tough time that everyone's going through there's a lot of stuff going on no matter where you are in the world it's pretty much happening everywhere um and i just really want to say thanks you know you guys are what keeps us going and it's because of the support that we get from our patreons um, that we're able to basically get this project in the water so really want to say thanks cheers guys so the